Today, I want to introduce to you the send the rain offering. It starts with this premise, Psalm 27, 13. We just read it. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. But that's not just me. I have a responsibility to help others who are praying that prayer to see it answered. I need to help any way I can some girl, some little boy that's praying that right now. If we can do something, what will be to us if we don't? And so the next three months, we're going to try to raise $35,000 by January 31st. And here are the different ways we're going to break that down. So sexual violence and slavery. This is through International Justice Mission. Guys, they do, I mean, for those of you who follow them, they do so much dope stuff. They, don't, they, they plan and they prep and they get ready. They find out. They work with local authorities. They find out where are these kids. And then they go in, they get subpoenas or they get warrants and they arrest these people. And then they bring these kids, sometimes these men and women, they bring them into recovery places where they're just going to be in a home for a while where they're going to get reacclimated into life. And you can follow them on their prayer chain on, on the Echo Prayer app. And they'll, they'll tell you, hey, we're about to go do this. Pray for us while we do this. It's awesome. So we're going to give to that again. There's also a church planting initiative in Thailand. We've supported these folks over the years. Not quite the same situation, but in Thailand, you can check this out online. It's the Thailand Initiative we work with friends and partners over there who they're planting churches and they're going to places where there's sex workers, there's prostitutes, and they're trying to give them secondary skills so that they can eventually get out of that life they hate and take care of their kids. But they also plant churches. There can be places that aren't there right now that are like this place, a place where people can come and they can come out of sin and come out of dark or come out of darkness and come into the light of knowing Christ. We can do it. We just have to decide to do it. We can't just intend to do it. We're going to give practical help to those in Israel. You know, during the attacks on Israel, it wasn't just slaughter, but there were medical devices and, and vehicles and all kinds of stuff that was destroyed on purpose. And so we're going to partner with Samaritan's Purse. They do a dope job. And they're going to reprovide ambulances and trauma kits and food and all kinds of stuff for people that are just like, their whole world was just destroyed. You might not know, but know this, but even right here at church, there's financial need all the time. People don't mention it, but they'll come and they'll be like, hey man, I'm in trouble. Can you guys do anything? And one of the ways that we can be brothers and sisters, and be like, you know, we set aside this every year for you so that we can be helpful because we know life is going to happen. And someday it's going to happen to you and me. And other days it's going to happen to somebody else. And we want to do what we can do to prepare for that. Over the past few years, we decided to revamp the way we're approaching our teenage ministry. Okay. So whereas we used to just do youth group and an occasional retreat, we've realized that the retreats are where it's at. I can remember as still a teenager where other people paid for me to go on a retreat and I went, dude, and I encountered Jesus Christ like I never had before. And there was time to soak in his word and just think and contemplate at a really key stage in life. And I don't know who they were, but I bet you I'm gonna give them high fives in heaven. I'm like, dude, you, you did this. Thank you. Well, our teens get, should get the chance to do this. So we're trying to do three retreats every year. We wanna send them, hey, go away, get with some awesome leader adults and we're to pay for you to have a dope time, not just sitting around, you know, a tent with some sticks over a campfire. No, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's powerful, fun, awesome, teeny thing to do, encountering Jesus. There's just always more stuff. There's always things that we, if you think this is a place that's doing good, and so there's always stuff breaking, or there's new tech that arrives, there's stuff we have to fix in order to fulfill the mission. And so we'll take a little piece of that and help us do that. But point being, by January 31st, we want to raise $35,000 to do good and whatever else comes our way, you know, stuff just comes up and the Lord's like, do good with that. And so we try to be faithful. But here's the warning. Some people won't do anything if they can't do everything. Don't let that throw you, man. Pray. For the next two and a half months, I know you're gonna be thinking about presents. You're gonna be thinking about maybe trips or, or whatever. Ask the Holy Spirit. Lord, how do you want me to do good? I'm only here for a little while. And I don't have everything, but I have a little. And maybe I could do good with it. 